startups begin in communities across the country. Why does Silicon Valley get so much credit? My name is Nick Castor. And I'm Caitlin Clays. We're interviewing the people building startup communities across America. But in the areas no one is talking about, the middle. This is the Ecosystem Builder Podcast by Mug.News. George Zarebski is the founder of Urban Accelerator X, a platform that offers training, guidance, and funding for startup businesses. Based out of Columbus, Ohio, the U works hard to support and educate entrepreneurs. George, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Of course. So jumping into our first question is, how did you first become involved in your startup community? Yeah, that's a great question. I've actually you know, transgressed a couple... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> a couple communities since my entrepreneurial journey started. Uh, I was actually at Air Force for 22 years, retired from that, and then started my entrepreneurial journey. Uh, I was actually in Alaska, and my two business partners were in North Dakota. Uh, and we got connected with Kauffman Foundation through One Million Cups and some other organizations that would help out entrepreneurs. And I just grew a love for the community. So when I got to Columbus in 2018, I hit the ground running looking for that entrepreneurial ecosystem. And uh, when I found it, you know, they were super welcoming and uh, embraced me. And so that's what kind of led us to, to where we are today. Yeah. So what's one thing that people don't know about your ecosystem? They wouldn't know it unless they were actually there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So exactly that, that Columbus, Ohio is an incredible entrepreneurial and just startup community uh, would never have known, would never have known. I didn't even realize how large the city is, but there's so many things going for it as far as location. You know, we're, we're two hours from like nine major cities. Um, obviously, the current state of connectivity in our society makes it really easy. But yeah, we've we've got a really thriving entrepreneurial community here. And I just in general, I don't think people would know that. So then if someone were looking to start a business in your community, in your ecosystem, uh, do you have any grants or uh, student like or I mean, uh, free loans that people are able to apply for? They do have a lot of uh, organizations locally that provide funding. Uh, there are some that provide grants. I don't know of any, though, that do interest free loans. But we do have like the uh, ECDI, the Economic Development Community uh, Institute here, that is like the number three micro lender in the U.S. actually. Uh, but they they really uh, I think their their interest rates are a bit higher. So, yeah, nothing that's that's, you know, interest free that I know of. But we try to provide grants to our our students, our cohort through uh, fundraisers and, you know, just grants or I'm sorry, philanthropic people in the community that want to, you know, share their resources. Mm hmm. Well, that's great. Um, and then so would you also say like another way people are there like platforms people can find them too, or uh, besides like reaching out to you, Google is like an essential. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're incredibly tightly connected to the other entrepreneurial support organizations in our community. Mm -hmm. uh, so we always share information and resources whenever there's something new that comes up that's an asset for a business owner. We're part of that mailing list, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So we're getting it from many different angles and uh, all of the ESOs are. So yeah, it's it's really it should be relatively easy to get information once you get plugged into the ecosystem. Right, right. So then once you do get plugged in, once you do start to make those connections, what would you say a person's first step to do when they are building their business? What's the first thing they should do? Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of a generic answer, you know, reach out to your local small business development center, right? Mm -hmm. That's always a great place to start. You know, they're commissioned by the city, by the mayor's office generally to put this work in to make sure that people are aware of the resources that are out there. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of people, especially in our demographic, don't know or don't feel comfortable going to those organizations mm -hmm. um, because we don't have a lot of the fundamental things in place that those organizations want to see uh, when people reach them. It's kind of like when you go to a bank and you're asking for a loan and they're like, hey, let me see the business plan. And you're like, oh, <laughs> and so the banks don't know where to send people. So now as as this uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem starts to grow, even the banks are starting to become aware to go check out places like us. So mm -hmm. even if you're not quite ready to go to the SBDC, uh, I would highly recommend going to one of your local accelerators uh, or entrepreneurial support organizations like ours. So then now that COVID has put a bit of a bummer on a lot of things and things are kind of closed, but hopefully they're opening up soon with the vaccine coming out. Um, but my question was, is are there any uh, coffee shops that entrepreneurs would hang out in in your area? Yeah, that's another good question. I mean, the past year, obviously, it's been all coffee via Zoom. 
Um, and I'm actually part of an organization called One Million Cups, and it's a weekly gathering that we would have mm -hmm. over cups of coffee. Uh, you know, the idea is a million entrepreneurs get together and have cups of coffee. Only good can come from that. Mm -hmm. So we used to do that pre-COVID, but since then it's just been, you know, Zoom. But mm -hmm. as we, as we, like you say, start to get vaccinated and get back out here, uh, the favorites in Columbus, which I'm sure will be again, are uh, Rev One. Uh, the library, uh, there's often many different events to choose from for entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. um, and they usually re revolve around coffee. But there's also a lot of other organizations that are putting on their own uh, programs, like we have one called Keys to Black Wealth, and they usually rent out space in, in various locations, and it's usually accompanied with food and your choice of beverage. But yeah, <laughs> so it's really, it's really, um, I think some of the you know, larger known entrepreneurial support organizations, they have space for people to come have coffee mm -hmm. and talk entrepreneurship. I have heard, uh, so based in St. Louis, I spoke with Mel Lambert and she had said that they have a gelato space rather than mm. coffee. And I was, I just, I was like, <laughs> I love the innovation. I love the creativity. Uh, was there, um, and then my other fun question is, uh, do you have a favorite kind of coffee? I don't, you know, I, I was in the coffee for a little bit when I was in the Air Force, um, and there was this Colombian brand. I can't think of the name of it now off the top of my head. That was really good. I mean, obviously Colombia, but uh, mm -hmm. there was this one in particular that I really enjoyed. I, I enjoy like a dark roast. So mm -hmm. yeah, but I don't have a good, you know, a top brand that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> so then, where should people go to learn about upcoming startup events in your community? So. You know, that list of ESOs that I mentioned earlier, you know, around Columbus um, and Central Ohio in general, again, we keep a really strong list. But I find that most events in Columbus, and I know this is usually a regional thing to which platform is being used, but um, Eventbrite is really, really popular here. So we often see um, all of those types of events come across Eventbrite. And then once you go to one or two, you start to recognize the people that are putting it on. You can, you know, kind of follow or subscribe to their feed and be aware of everything that's going on. That is one thing that has been nice. Like Eventbrite has been so utilized. I used to only know it for concerts, for festivals. And uh, even through Zoom, I mean, from Eventbrite, you're able to kind of go to a comedy show, like I did mm -hmm. one of those. And so absolutely, it makes complete sense that things are transferring over to the digital world as well. Uh, I guess another question is, are th things opening up or any events that might be happening soon? Just with COVID, again, those vaccines coming out. Do you know of any like more in-person events that are coming up? I don't know of any that are strictly in person. I mean, this still answers your question, but they're all they all seem to be hybrid. And, you know, our organization that has actually been consulted to do the virtual portion of, of a lot of these upcoming events. There are a slew of them, and, you know, of course, they're not all right here in the top of my head, but because mm -hmm. we're just working on so many and some are tentative, yeah. but they're, th we are opening up though, to answer that portion of the question. We definitely are. People are getting back out here. And the thing that's different than before is people are trying to focus on making sure that we can still reach the, the community and the audience that can't necessarily or doesn't want to come out. So we are adding that virtual component to a lot of the events, just in the community overall, not just in ecosystem or in the uh, entrepreneurial space, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So are there any uh, co-working spaces in your area? There are a lot. There's a lot. So actually, one is called Cohatch, which I think started locally, and they have about a dozen locations, um, and the rates are pretty good. I don't think we have the WeWork, but there's uh, definitely um, a significant amount, and even around the Columbus area, actually most of them are around the outskirts uh, into the suburbs. Uh, the Delaware Entrepreneur Center, the New Albany Innovation Center, there's just a tons of different uh, ecosystem builders out here that have that that shared working space so then what are some successful successful or notable startups from your community yeah from the community overall we've got roots insurance i think comes to mind as one of the largest we've got cover my meds there's a there's there's quite a few those are two to come to mind uh, right away you see those in the skyline mm -hmm. uh, as you come into downtown um but yeah there's a pretty strong thriving uh community here there's a lot of what unicorns mm -hmm. <laughs> coming out of the Columbus area. Yeah. Right. Well, and that's another thing like you already spoke about. It. It's like you wouldn't have known, you wouldn't have guessed Columbus. Like you, you know, that's that. So that kind of already goes to show like it's much bigger than you thought originally. Mm -hmm. So are there any notable entrepreneurs that you've worked with? Yeah, actually, I've worked with some of the entrepreneurs from those two big ones I just mentioned, but I would like to probably highlight the ones that we deal with directly and intimately and that we help um, 
with their entrepreneurial journey, journey, whether it's starting their business or growing it. So there's a couple that uh, we've just had come through some of our recent training platforms. Uh, one of them is Daria Raglan. She's launching a business that's in the youth mental health and education space. Mm-hmm. Um, she went through our, our winter accelerator and she's just, man, she's just hit the ground running. She's taken the information. She's taken advantage of every resource that we've been able to come up with and more. Um, and she's a go-getter. So I think that she's one to watch. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm ready to invest in that platform because uh, I, I believe mental health is an issue that we need to spend a lot more attention and focus on. It's gotten better than it has been in years past, but uh, there's still a lot of work to do there. Um, another one would be Lauren Cotton. She has a company called Co-Woofers. <laughs> and basically, she is, think co-working and woofers of dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, she's making it easy for businesses to allow people to bring their pets to work. Oh. By kind of taking care of all of the the structural components of it mm-hmm. and making it easier. Because she found that that was the biggest hang up was usually something like that would get thrown on HR. They're already swamped. It's, they don't really want to take it on. So she's kind of devised a, uh, you know, uh, cookie cutter. I don't want to say cookie cutter, but um, I can't think of the, the phrase I'm looking for. But, you know, she's she's devised the platform and she makes it custom for each um, each organization. Mm -hmm. You know, that one would be a very good one to invest in now, too, because people have been working from home. Like if you're able to work from home, all your pets are getting all your like you're in the house. Um, And I know uh, my roommates, they're like worried about their dogs having uh, separation anxiety when things start Mm -hmm. to open back up. So I think that would be a great way to hybrid, you know, that transition of doing hybrid Zoom and in person. So. Yes, That's I'm definitely going to mention idea. that to her too. She'll probably give you some residuals, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a great idea. But no, it's, it's she's just been amazing too. Just her attitude. Um, she's a cell person and she doesn't know it, you know, mm-hmm. because she's just so passionate about it. And it just, it makes sense. And she identifies what the problem is that she's solving straight away when you talk to her. And so you're just, you're, you're bought in right away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So you mentioned she was a part of your accelerator, right? Uh, the yes. U. Uh, so how many accelerators has has the U like run? We've done two full accelerators. We've done a couple workshops that, or I'm sorry, boot camps that usually are over the weekend. Um, and and those, you know, we take people whether they have a business or not. We give them a new business to run mm-hmm. and partner them up. So it's usually teams of three. And uh, we go through all of everything from ID8 to launch, right? In three mm-hmm. days. And wow. it's pretty fun. Usually the attitude going in is for, especially for those that already have a business is, oh, I already have a business, but what, what, this has nothing to do with my business. And on the other end, they're like, oh my gosh, this was amazing. I didn't realize <laughs> how much I didn't know because they were so focused in their lane. Again, they're focused on doing whatever their superpower is mm-hmm. and not really thinking of the ancillary things that are critical for running a business. But yeah, so we've had a couple of those too. And it's really the, am I really ready to be an entrepreneur for those that aren't already in that hot seat? Mm -hmm. Uh, So yeah, we love that one. That's our favorite uh, platform to put on. So then how do you include diversity in your ecosystem? Yeah, great question. So, you know, people think about diversity and they all often think uh, one direction. So we're kind of the flip side of that. Internally, we check quite a few of the boxes uh, for underserved communities. So we're people of color, women led, veteran led, disabled. So of our three founders, we, we're checking all of those boxes. And um, when well, I say founders, but, you know, the three partners. Mm-hmm. Um, and we rely heavily on our network to enable the uh, services and and work that we put out so we rely on the other entrepreneurial centers which may not be led with the same type of uh, uh, diversity and background right but we need all the allies we need everyone working together in order to succeed and it's just been an amazing experience in columbus i can't overemphasize how opening and welcome especially last year we went through a lot of different things last year Mm -hmm. especially in the realm of dei and um just the outreach from those communities I mentioned earlier, like the Rev ones and and others, um, just to like, how can we how can we do better? How can we make a difference here? So we've got the full support of our community, all of our peers, and it truly is a, a open, welcoming ecosystem here in Columbus. Mm-hmm. So I think that's kind of how we we keep the balance there. You know, it's it's all of one thing is never a good thing, right? We we need diversity across the spectrum, and it's not always one direction. So. Uh, that's that's our focus is to make sure we keep it equitable, but, you know, super diverse because we need everyone working together. Mm-hmm. No, you uh, again, like that's really great to hear. And it sounds like you have many different perspectives within the business. You talked about checking mm-hmm. boxes and uh, 
uh, like you said, strengthening a strong ecosystem means you have to have diversity, just like in a plant life ecosystem mm-hmm. as well. Uh, so then, are there any news outlets, podcasts, blogs that you recommend uh, that cover startups in your community? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Very excited about it, too, because I work intimately with this gentleman. Uh, I was a longtime listener and ended up being part of his production team as he transitions from podcast only to also including video into his work. Um, his name is Elio Harmon, and he runs 614 Startups. So it's 614startups.com. He's been doing it for some time now, um, and he's he's the leader in this community. He's actually got an audience uh, nationwide and some international, but uh, he's grown really, really quick, and all he does is focus on startups. And he's covered, you know, the big name folks that I've talked about earlier, uh, the, the Cover My Meds and, and those folks. He's he's followed those folks from the very beginning before Series A, precede any of that stuff, wow. right? So he's 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 been part of that ecosystem for some time. So I'm super excited to have him as part of our family. And uh, the fact that we get to work with him so intimately means we're we're that much more engaged with the community and what's going on because of the work he's doing Mm -hmm. that we can then start to make those connections between the the community that we serve as well. Um, So it's really exciting. I don't probably hear it in my voice, but it's super exciting uh, having Elio. And and quite honestly, I don't know anyone else that's operating in that space in Columbus. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think he's kind of got a, you know, a whole other market there. Um, he is the de facto person for for startups. So yeah, it's really exciting. That's wild. He sounds like um, you know, joking, but like a, the hipster of knowing startups and like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I knew yeah, them before they were big. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. That's really the, the, the how it feels, you know, when you're around him, especially if you've listened to some of those earlier interviews. And he's he's just so well read into the whole ecosystem. He really gets it. Um, at a really high level. So he can talk to uh, folks at any stage, quite honestly. I mean, I'd put him in front of Musk in a second or Gates or anybody else, right? Like Mm -hmm. this guy is, he's he's the real deal. He's the business. I mean, it's been really energizing to listen to you talk about your ecosystem and everything that you've covered. So like you said, like it's very tangible how passionate you are about your location and how uh, everyone works together and there's diversity within your ecosystem as well. So I was wondering then before we close out, do you have any final thoughts or any questions that or answers you have that I didn't ask? Oh boy, now there's a whole flood of, oh, this is my five seconds of shine, <laughs> what do I say? <laughs> um, I think I think I, I think what I feel today a lot is that find your tribe, you know, um, regardless of what it is you're doing, you know, everything can be, I think when you zoom out and you start to look at different uh, subcultures and things like that, everybody has their group, their clique, their tribe, right? Um, for, for entrepreneurs out there that haven't found it yet, you have to get out there. You know, we have a tendency to want to put our head down, stick to the, you know, the grind of building whatever our thing is, whatever our genius is. Um, but we lose sight, right? Obviously, from a business perspective, you lose sight of what the customer actually wants because you're building what you want. So you have to get out and do customer research. But then the other side of that is you need a support network. You have to have a strong support network around you to keep you motivated, to get you through those lulls when you feel like, ah, there's just, you know, you have to be out there. So I would, I would, that would be my, my final thoughts, I think, is make sure you get out there, become part of the ecosystem, um, share, pay it forward, and you'll, you'll receive, you know, exponentially in return. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all of these really in-depth answers. And I really appreciate the energy you brought. And I feel like you really represented the Columbus, Ohio area. So thank you so much for coming on the show and spending time here. Uh, Again, thank you so much for having me. I know it's cliche, but I really do appreciate it. Um, I love talking about what we do. I was talking to my therapist earlier and if you can wake up every day and you're doing what you love, then that's that's wealth. And so I definitely have wealth and I love being able to talk to other folks about it. So thank you again so much. Of course. Thanks, George. Now that we've learned about an ecosystem from a person who's building it, I'm going to link back up with Nick to clarify on some jargon and take a deeper dive into this ecosystem. Caitlin, how was your conversation with George? I had a great time. You know, we'd actually been in contact for a little while. um, So it was finally nice to 
mean person. He's from Columbus, Ohio. And, you know, we just couldn't stop talking about Columbus. So I was really, I'm really excited to get to chat more about this. Yes. Yeah, of course. And it's, it's funny how, um, these ecosystem builders are busy enough that it, it can take a while to lock down these interviews. Um, so what, what were some of your biggest takeaways with the, uh, with talking to George? Well, Columbus, Ohio is has a lot more to offer for entrepreneurs than one would think. So I think one of the biggest takeaways is not to assume what places are good and what places are quote unquote not good. Um, he had talked about how he was in the Air Force and someone had recommended like Columbus, Ohio. And he's like, really? Like, so he himself at one point was like, I don't know about this. But when he got there again, he was just like, Caitlin, you have no idea. There's so much going on. So um, again, one of like those social takeaways is don't judge a book by its cover, you know, re referencing to our <laughs> interview with Mel Lambert about the libraries. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Classic. Um, yeah. yeah. And the, I, I think people make that broad assumption about the Midwest just like always. And it, it definitely is, is misplaced most of the time. Um, how jargony was it? Was there anything you had to look up after? No, not too much jargon, but I do want to like plug them. So they offer, uh, like, classes, workshops, that's what I was going for. They offer workshops where they kind of can have the opportunity to go over jargon with entrepreneurs. Uh, it's very educational. They offer educational services. So again, like any questions that entrepreneurs who are just getting interested in entrepreneurship, those workshops really help people out and get people connected. So that's kind of that relation to jargon. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's good to just have those like have those resources available to people starting out. Um, was there anything else you wanted to, wanted to touch on? Uh, I guess like this is also another plug. I did another interview with Lolo Smith, who is their COO of Urban Accelerator X. And I want to say whatever you and I didn't quite cover, you should really check out Lolo's interview because she covers the intricacies of what they do. And so that was also a great interview that I really recommend people check out if they have more questions about Urban Accelerator X. And, and where's that interview living at? Uh, that's going to be on Mug.News uh, under, let's see, interviews Lolo Smith. Uh, we also interviewed her for Black History Month, and so it was really appreciated that she spent the time to speak with us. We can definitely link that in the description, the article and the YouTube channel, so definitely check those out. All right, perfect. Well, if there is nothing else, Kaylin, I'll read us out. If, yeah, go for it. All right, perfect. Um, so thank you for listening to today's episode of the Ecosystem Builder Podcast, which is a product of Mug.News and hosted by myself, Nick Kastner, and Kaylin Clays. If you have any questions about today's episode, connect with us on Twitter at, at Nick Kastner, at Clays Creates, or at Mug News Official. If you enjoyed this episode, please, please leave a review and share with your friends. It supports the show greatly. We release episodes every single Wednesday morning, so make sure to follow so you don't miss a beat.